And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch. No, you're no, you're not. You don't have to adjust your calendar. It is not Sunday yet. This is the return of the Geek Watch special. And for this for this partic and for this particular one, the last time that the last time that we that this was done, it was on the illustrious tales. It was on the illustrious tales series, and how to bring that into the wor into the world of dice rolling. Here's a, here's a short version. Don't use D and D. If you do use D and D for it, I probably will have to beat you, and I'll probably not stop beating you until my arm goes numb, because the punishment should fit the crime. But this time around, it isn't a it isn't that, but instead a reconstruction. Since Star Ocean has had a interesting and tumultuous history that hopefully we'll be able to delve deep delve deeper into down the line. But as is last as is last time with this kind of special, I am not alone in this endeavor. Welcoming back to the welcoming back to the temple, my and my analytical brother from another mother. Good brother good brother Daniel. How how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for bringing me on yet again. I'm always <laughs> glad to be in the temple. Feels very illustrious. Thank, thank you for thank you for coming on. Um, but for this one, it's, initially there was the thought of doing of do, of adapting Star Ocean to tabletop, but a lot of but a lot of the notes that we had last time around when it came to tales, we can more or less transfer them over. And yeah. And hell, the, even though the even though the beat system in in Star, in Star Ocean four and five um, has it has its issues, it does provide a good framework for an archetype system. Um, I can agree with that. But for but instead, but because of that, instead, I decided to call an audible and do and do the reconstruction treatment involving possibly the most contentious entry in the franchise. This week we are reconstructing Star Ocean till the end of time. Now I I think you and I were tempted to also go with the fourth game, The Last Hope, because there is a decent amount to talk about there. But I think uh, I think we went with till the end of time because of just how bewildering certain aspects of it are, I, I think it would be a shame not to ignore to ignore it and to not cover it. Um, I think the I think the wording that I had at the time when we were discussing this is, "Till the end of time" had more meat on the bones. Yes. Cause... Yes. Um. Ar arguably, I don't know if that meat is tasty or not. I guess that's for you to decide, but it, it, there is more of it <laughs> for Stars and Three. Well, to ex to explain why I use the meat on the bones an analogy, and I've I've mentioned this in past ones, but just being a just being a bad story is not is not enough because it's it's more about it's more about a bad story and waste and wasted opportunities and those are, and the and the and that and that bad story can be can be turned around with just a few changes. It's a very specific kind of bad that's needed when it comes to doing reconstructions. So, for instance, you will never you will never see me do a reconstruction on say Fast and Furious because because how the fuck do you even how the fuck would I even do that? Um, not, not only that, but I'd say like the badness is part of the charm. Of Fast and the Furious, you, that's a kind of movie that you could just like start drinking a beer and and just throw it on and have a laugh at it with your mates. Yeah. And just sh you know, shitting it up. I was I was asked once if I would ever do a reconstruction on the on the Bayformers movies, and once again, once again, I had said I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not going to do that simply because one, um, Michael Bay doesn't care doesn't care about it doesn't care about his own work so why should i and two the 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 badness is certainly there but it's not there in a way that's in a way that's interesting or in a way that i could flip around and when it comes to certain entries i just don't want to talk about them because they because they leave a bad taste in my mouth i also feel like with the michael bay movies they are so 
content with being themselves, it's kind of hard to say anything because even it, 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 it would be like talking to someone and pointing out like, gee, you really are an asshole. You really are an arrogant, you know, shithead. And they're just like grinning at you the whole time, nodding their head and being like, yeah. Like, what do you, like, what do you, what do you, what do you even do with that? Um, there's, oh, there's also, there's also the fact that, um, tr that trying, trying to do multiple movies in one, in one go for a reconstruction is a little bit above my pay grade. So so instead that we're gonna, too. so that instead too. we're gonna ta we're gonna tackle a we're gonna tackle a hundred hour console style RPG. Yeah, <laughs> that's totally within our pay grades. <laughs> but Star, before before we even get into the shit, including that moment, which there's no way we're get there's no way we're gonna be able to avoid it. But I want to hold off on it until until I have to rip off that band aid. Um, yeah. We do we do need to set the stage a bit when it comes to star, when it comes to Star Ocean since its origins the origin story of the franchise itself is a, is a bit amusing and it all goes and much like a lot of much like a lot of stories it all goes back to the original Tales of Fantasia. Yes. Um. Now I now you can you can help me fill in the blanks on this, but as as I understand it. Um, at the time that w that the studio that was responsible for that game was um, Wolf Team. Yes, but, and that and that was based that was based on a um a fantasy novel by the creator, which I'm not even I'm not sure if that was ever published. Um, I'm not. I don't. I want to say it wasn't, but that there were radio dramas released after the fact that elaborated more on what was contained in the novel yeah because the, the the creator of that novel and, I, and and at the same time the creator of the games or the uh, first game was not happy about several story changes that were that were made as i as i understand it um, as I as I understand, yes, it was story changes, but there were other changes as well being made to Fantasia that um, that Yoshiharu Gotanda and two other developers in particular they were not happy with what was happening mm -hmm. um, because when they made uh, they made a prototype, if I'm not mistaken, of Fantasia for the Super Famicom. And they were showing it around to different publishers, and nobody was biting. And the main reason was because the game was too ambitious. And it would have required them to use more expensive Super Nintendo carts in order to house the entire game. And uh, since this team was... Uh, Wolf Team was not known for good games, just to be flat out. Like, a lot of games that Wolf Team were responsible for were kind of crap. Um, Ernest Evans on the Sega CD being the only one that comes to mind right now, but um, that that's considered one of the worst Sega CD games for a reason. So, despite the fact that Tales of Fantasia is nowadays looked back upon very fondly as a you know classic uh, Super Famicom RPG, uh, Wolf Team did you know before that not known for good stuff. So th no companies were really biting even though uh, Fantasia showed a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't until they reached Namco. And Namco saw the potential in it, but, again, wanted to make changes. These three developers in particular, Gotanda and two others, I forget the other guys' names, they were not happy, and they decided, fuck this, we're going to make our own company with Blackjack and Hookers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they made Tri-Ace, because they are Three ace developers. Eh. Japanese um, word play. It's fun. Yes. And that's basically how Star Ocean came to be. That was the first game that they made. Where basically it was in essence a response to Tales of Fantasia. It was, it was what Fantasia wasn't. You know, Fantasia is a primarily a... Uh, fantasy 
RPG while Star Ocean was a sci-fi RPG. Although, um, in my in my not so in my not so humble opinion, the as far, when it comes to being a sci-fi RPG, um, it didn't it didn't exi- it's never been able to commit. I agreed, agreed. I feel like the only Star Ocean game that actually was true to the uh to its sci-fi leanings was the fourth game because that game actually allowed you to travel to different planets um and some of them were like very highly technologically advanced it actually felt like you were going on a space adventure you know um going across the the galaxy while in star ocean one uh you only go to like two or three planets if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Star Ocean 2, only two planets, um, separated by two disks. Star Ocean 3, I think it was a little bit more than that. I think it was only four... No, it was three planets, and then there's the the fourth dimension, I believe. Yeah, we'll get to that. And We'll get to that later. But then in Star Ocean 5, they regressed, and uh, you spend the entire game on one fucking planet. And I think that's I think that's the reason why when a lot of people when a lot of people play word association with the idea of a of a co- of a console style RPG, I still hate the phrase JRPG. I'm still I still I'm still not using it unless I have to. Um, that it that has more of a science fiction leaning. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna say Fantasy Star. At F- Fantasy Star is without a doubt far more sci-fi than than star ocean has been and what i do what i do find kind of funny is as i as i recall trice has sworn up and down for the past 20 for the past 25 plus years that there that the big that the big inspiration for star ocean was star trek but when you when you when you actually look at it the the Star Trek DNA is very surface level. Um, yeah, and 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 again, I feel like the only game in the series that I would even say has Star Trek DNA in it, or at least prominently, is the fourth game. It's not really the case in the other games in the series. No. And I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not saying. I know some. I know some people say, but that um. That you can't that you can't you can't bring in the science fiction while also having fantastical elements like symbology. I don't agree with that one bit. Putting aside the fact that against um, again tech again techniques in Fantasy Star do that, but there's also there's also the fact that there is a lit there is a litany of pul- of pulp style um, science fiction stories over the last hundred years that ha- that handle that mix. I know some people bring up Star Wars. Um, I um, I don't have I don't have to bring that up. Um, for fuck's mm-hmm. sake, I could bring up fucking Dune. <laughs> sure. I mean, is am I am I stretching things a bit? Yeah, but there's but there's always but if you look at Dune, there's or even just or just read because um, start starting off with the David Lynch movie isn't isn't exactly the best idea. Um, but there's always been a heavy element of mysticism, even in even if it is a space opera. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not super familiar with Doom personally, but I I am aware of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of it's one of those things I I have to bring up because whenever people think sci-fi fantasy mixing, they think Star Wars, and that's um that's certainly tr- that's certainly true, but that's not the beginning and end of it. Uh, you, did you know that there was a sorry to go off track? Did you know that there was a Dune stealth PC game? Yeah, I haven't played the thing, but I I knew about it. I played it. I don't remember much about it. I just I re- I remember like you you would like uh, do stealth kills, and it's so ridiculous um, because like you had to um, maintain your water. Mm-hmm. So That's... and what and and a way to do that would be to stealth kill enemies, and then the water would spray all over the place, and that would somehow be collected into your canteen. 
it's definitely a stretch, <laughs> but it is, but it is it is in key, it is in keeping with um with Dune because because oh, okay. of, because of the fact that just being outside on Arrakis, you need you need you need um you need special equipment. You need i.e. a um still suit that's co that's it's said to be constantly recycling recycling and refreshing your water and just water itself is he is held as um sacred no i do i do know that 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 water is considered very important in the lore i just thought it was silly how like when you would stealth kill enemies the water would literally just spray all over the place but then it w somehow also refilled your canteen it was yeah. silly um, that's definitely a very gamey thing, but the but um, but that's but a, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the Star Trek elements are 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 there is their their equivalent of a prime directive regarding underdeveloped planets and a gla and a um in, and a galactic federation. Um, yeah, which... the the that that prime directive. Is brought up a lot in Star Ocean Three, in particular. Mm -hmm. But and the interpretation over the years of the Prime Directive is a contentious thing, even among Star Trek fans. But um, and when and then and then we get to Star Ocean th Star Ocean Three. Now I will I will admit, if you had to nail me down and pick my favorite of pick my favorite within the series, um, it's probably Second Story. Although, if in, although if anyone can by by chance happen to find happen to find the um, remake of it, go with that instead. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah, two two is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, like well, the first one, the first one, it in fact in fact with both the first and second one, I'd re I'd I'd be more willing to recommend someone getting the um, PSP remake than the originals. That version is also available on the Switch. In hindsight, it is it is kind of funny how it is kind of funny how many good remakes ended up going on the PSP. But three it three is three aka till the end of time is what is one of the more contentious um, console RPGs of this series. But I'd also I'd also argue of the of the um. Of the sixth generation of consoles, I think that's fair. Uh, it's it's it, when the game came out, it made a splash. I mean, it it's one of the few uh, console RPGs that I can think of that even has like a greatest hits uh, variation, aside from Final Fantasy X. Um, and there's there's probably some, but like no nothing else comes to mind. Um, Kingdom Hearts as well. You, now that I think about Kingdom Hearts there's, again. There's probably more, but like the only other yeah. no, the only other one that I can I can say that wasn't that didn't come from the Square Empire around around that time. And ag again, there are probably others. Was Episode One of Xenosaga? You're right. Xenosaga did have a greatest hits. Uh, variation mm -hmm. it's true and you know the, these games do have to reach a certain sales threshold before they can get that box variation yeah so that that says something that like that's uh till the end of time um was able to achieve that now, um one of the, one of the things that i think we need i think we should go over is the fact that as i understand it the version that we ended up getting here in the states was technically a director's cut version of the one that was in um, Japan and um, Europe. I don't know about Europe, but yes, the uh, version that we got was essentially a fixed up version. I, I can't tell you what was changed aside from uh, they addressed some glitches and um, they made improvements, which I find kind of funny because not to say that till the end of time was like particularly glitchy, but it's the version we got still had some glitches. There was one glitch in particular that was extremely annoying, where uh, the camera would 
And I don't know what would trigger this. The camera would suddenly shoot out so far away. Uh, sometimes it would exist outside of the skybox, and you couldn't see anything. Mm-hmm. Again, I have no idea what caused this glitch, but um, this happened to me uh, a good number of times during my uh, playthrough of the game. Mm-hmm. Now, but the the big... While while there are certain while there are certainly some mechanical issues that ended up happening, things things like the bonus gauge being being kind of pointless after after the first act, um, the the um in, the int- the introduction of the introduction of guts and the HP MP ki- um kill setup, which I'm t- which according to what I according to what I've been told were attempts to make the game feel more tactical. <laughs> <laughs> um, to it to which I, to which I, f- I feel like I, I feel like I need to channel my inner pin- princess bride and just go you keep using that word I don't think it means what you think it means good old Vesemir Cause, seriously I, he- I hear th- I tactical tactical much like RPG elements is one of those is one of those buzzwords that I often hear that just makes me roll my eyes Oh. Yeah, I can't. I can't say it. It, it really did that. No, no. Um, it's a, and we'll, well, we may we may as well get the the HP MP kill thing. Um, neat I neat idea, but having people play defensively is not is not what this kind of game is designed for. And the same goes for the guts system that was trying that was trying to be a stamina bar with. Um, with a ro- with a rock paper scissors setup when it came to light and heavy attacks, but again, but again, it's it's uh, it's built. F- that thing is designed for a co- for a playstyle that this st- that Star Ocean has never supported. There, those kind of things are meant for a more defensive playstyle, and Star Ocean is far more aggressive. I I would also say with the MP kill idea. Is that for most of the game, it doesn't even have any a- actual application. Um, it very rarely even comes up, and when it does, it's been so long since the players even like learned of its existence that when it happens, you're blindsided and you're like, "Wait a minute! Why did I just die?" Because there's so few enemies that directly attack your MP, and I, there, there's probably a few abilities that the player has that can do it as well. But I'm not, I can't think of any at the top of my head. You don't get that many, is what I mean. I um, distinct, I distinctly remember having very having um, builds specifically designed to exploit MP kills on enemies, and it made a lot of boss fights ridiculously easy. Mm, okay. See, I. I wasn't aware of that, um, but I can believe it. Oh. But like, I would say for a lot of people who are playing the game, it was a mechanic that you're like mostly unaware of until suddenly your characters are dead despite having full health. Mm-hmm. And-, and I think that's a, I think that's a flaw. I think that's a huge flaw because if you're gonna have a mechanic like that, especially one that's so uh, unique. Then it needs it needs to have more practical application uh, consistently throughout the game, so that it justifies its existence. Mm-hmm. Now, but the but the big the big thing that w- that was that w- that was the most contentious regarding till the end of time, of course, was the story. And yes, because it's st- it starts out, it starts out about the way you'd expect, and then go and then goes off and then goes into sheer into sheer unadulterated levels of whiskey, tango, foxtrot. I agree. It it just goes off the fucking deep end. Mm-hmm. And. Like you, ha- it's it's obvious. Obviously, if you're trying, if you're trying to, obviously, if you're trying to be sci-fi, you ne- 
um, some sort some sort of of sh of shaking things up in in a, in an epic is go is going to be inevitable, but that pendulum can go too far the other way, and the and the eternal sphere thing where where the entire universe is revealed to be a giant fucking met a giant fucking metaverse MMO for for oh. for fourth dimensional beings is oh. one, is one of those things that um that you would see in me, that you would see as a sight gag in Men in Black or at, or as a joke in a Douglas Adams script now i want to say just fun like inherently speaking i don't think there's anything wrong with there being a twist that the world is a simulation but to specifically frame it as an mmo saps all of the tension from the narrative mm -hmm. cuz it just it, it injects uh, this uh, element of ridiculousness to it that just makes it really hard to to stomach yeah and the thing the thing is you have you the reason why we're focusing on that first is simply because that's the big elephant in the room that that has to be brought up. It's impossible to talk about till the end of time without talking about that moment. Right. And but but before that, you have you you have a you have you have a case where where fit where um fit where fate and Cecilia um end up being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Go um do. Pull the pull the cra pull the crash land maneuver. You end up meeting Cliff on a planet. You try and get off the planet. Crash land into another planet. Um, get caught get caught up in it. Get caught up in a war between two nations on a se on a planet that's a that's supposed to be akin to 17th century Earth. Then then a then the angels show up, and th things get. You end up finding about the you end up finding out about the t about the time gate about w about what Fate's parents did to did to hit did to him Cecilia and Mar and Maria for that particular project and th and then you then getting the whole 4D space and the cr and the creator of the of the of the um, Sphere Corporation be being or rather, or rather the person who's created the eternal sphere being an asshole who wants to delete everything because they got too smart and th and then and he en that ends up happening and yet everything's restored afterwards with no explanation whatsoever can we just uh take a moment to appreciate the fact that the main character's name is fate lion god i be remiss if I didn't point out in the Japanese version they they didn't even beat around the bush. They spelled his name F A T E. <laughs> um, I believe it. But because so because of that you have you have one too many pla you have one too many bits of pla of planet jumping without without a point. You have you have a, you have a lot of escalation. Leading to leading to a leading to a reveal that undermines the events that you've done up until this point. Instead instead of instead of recontextualizing like the proper twist does, and an ending where where that ha, that ha, that is yeah. treated as a giant shrug, which um Rod Serling can get away with that in a Twilight Zone episode. You can't get away with that when you spent a hundred hours on this thing. I agree. So it, it it it's it's one thing to have a bit of a shrug at the end of a uh, twenty five minute uh, television program. It's another thing with, like you said, hundred hour RPG where you've invested possibly a month of your time playing this fucking thing, only to be uh, slapped in the face at the end. Yes. So with all of that said, let us have a go. Because, and as in term now the usual rule since you're new on this the usual rules apply we can, we have to keep, we have to keep the inclusion of new things to a relative minimum <coughs> um, we don't have we don't really have to worry about extended continuity since I'd 
since the only the only Star Ocean games that try and that try and do continuity in that regard are one and two. Three takes place. Yeah, the, those are the only ones that are directly connected to each other. While three, four, and five are just kind of like loosely placed, kind of willy nilly on the timeline. Um, supposedly, three takes place four hundred years after the second story. Which is, and I, which, be- I believe, the Last Hope is a prequel by a few hundred years as well. Yes. And as far as integrity and and faithful and faithlessness, I still got no fucking clue where you'd put that in. I don't know, and I don't care. Mm-hmm. So, i th- I think I think the f- I think the first few scenes up and up until the up until that whole that whole um that first bit of crash landing. I think we can keep. I think we can keep that without having to do all that much in the way of changes. I I can agree. I I don't think there's anything particularly egregious. It, the the main character is on vacation with his uh, childhood friend because of course it's a childhood friend. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I have to correct myself. I don't know why I said Cecilia when it's Sophia. I don't know what I was thinking on that. So my bad. No, it's it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's him and Sophia and they're on vacation, and then, uh, the attack happens, which forces them to separate, Mm -hmm. and, uh, fate ends up on, um, on that planet. The first planet planet that he ends up on is Vanguard, is Vanguard 3. Yes. Um. Now, in my opinion, this is where I would start changing things. Because I feel that th- this planet feels kind of pointless. Um, I don't understand why we have to go from this planet to then hop over to the next planet, which is where the meat of g- the game takes place. Yeah, that that is that is something that is something that I... Vanguard Vanguard three. Very, very much, very much felt like a um, felt like a glor- felt like a glorified tutorial for the mechanics that you're going into, but I don't see a reason yeah. why I don't see a reason, but it feels it feels a bit repetitious to to do this whole es- escape from attack, cra- crash land crash land crash land on an un- on an un- underdeveloped planet, then escape that planet and crash land on another underdeveloped planet. Yeah, it feels like this planet should ex- instead just be a region in the other planet. So just combine yeah. them, and it's just, oh, it's just another region, and then they just travel from that region to um, to the main one. Like, yeah. this is just a tutorial region, you could say. Yeah. The um... Now, orig- originally... The the other the other major the other major thing that happens on um on Va- on Vanguard three is this is this is where fate is this is where fate is introduced to um Cliff and Mirage. Yes. Um, and as as an aside, Mirage originally was in the original version was not playable. Um, she's this only, is true. Which is uh, is understandable because well she's from the. Si- well, same race as Cliff, and more or less the more or less the same set of skills, just slightly different. They're both they're yeah. both still bra- they're both still in the brawler archetype. Um. But, af- but after. But after get after get after getting at- after getting attacked by, the by the um. By the Vend- by the Vendini a second time they cr- they crash land on the planet that you're going to be spending a good chunk of, a good chunk of your time on Elicor two, um, but the other thing is Vanguard and Elicor when it comes to their level of development only have a hundred years difference one sixteenth century one seventeenth century and while there certainly were a lot of technological changes between those centuries on Earth um, not enough to really justify two separate planets on that regard. I am very much of the opinion of having of ha- of having having it that in- instead of va- we excise Vanguard Vanguard 3 and just have it that you crash land on Elicor 2 
just in, just in a more backwater region. So you can still exactly. you can still have the you can still have the introduction. It's just it's just that you're for, you're further out in the boonies. Yeah, um, that was my thinking as well. It and it it kind it cuts the some of the fat where again, we don't have our characters going back out into space only to go crash land back into another planet. Um, also, you don't. Also, you don't have the issue of of cr of cr of crash landing multiple multiple times because then you have to wonder: is f it, is the is the writer a graduate of the Counselor's Qu Troy School of Driving? Yeah, maybe. Um, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying two cr two crashes and two crashes in one day. It's like, ah, hey, come on, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Tighten up. Um, but since, but I we'd prob, but we'd prob because of that you'd pr you'd it would you'd probably have you'd probably have it that um after after de after dealing after dealing with um Reserbian who's who's the who's the threat in that in that for on um, Vanguard three um it'd be easy you could still have the miscommunication where where um. Where er, where Aeroglyph believes believes that um believes that the ship that the crash landed ship is a we, is a weapon de developed by Aquaria. Since that's the that's the major theme f on Elicor two on Elicor two is the is the war, is the um war between war between the two nations. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff that those. Uh... That the region that you're in, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff that would be considered too technologically advanced was kind of hand waved of oh well it's just from this other region that's more advanced and I'm like oh yeah those guys are always it at some point I felt like that excuse starts stretching a bit too thin of like well how much more technically technologically advanced can they possibly be that these people would just accept some of this stuff um when it if if um aquaria is supposed to be that technologically advanced um then there's the obvious question of if they're that if they if you're at war with it with with the, with a civilization that's supposedly more a country that's more advanced than you why are you not getting curb stomped yeah now, you would just get your asses handed to you now um i can't now I I'm for, I'm per, I'm perfectly willing to go to go with the mis, to go with the mistake mi, mistaken assumption instead of instead of doing this whole thing of the ship being a supposed weapon um I I'd still keep the mistaken identity thing just switch it for instead of a weapon it's um well you guys are spies we don't we've never seen you around here is that cliche yes but it's the cliche that fits yeah I can agree with that. It it it, it certainly makes more sense. Because the the whole essentially you're essentially accomplishing the same thing, mista mistaken identities. It's mm -hmm. ju it's just that it's just that you're doing it with a, with a more gr with a more grounded um co a more grounded concept. Um, right. Rather than than this kind of like escalating, like oh, we're just from this other country and they're yeah, yeah I don't know and. After that, you can, st and you can still have you can still have the fact that they get rescued by um by Nell, who's totally not a ninja. <laughs> yeah. Um. And in instead of instead of the whole instead of the whole thinking thinking that they're engineers, it you you'd pr uh, the way you'd probably be able to re to um to salvage that. Is ha is have it that is have it that she th that she thinks that they're that they're not spies they're defectors. Since the mm. whole th the whole thing is she's she's letting them go thinking on the condition that they help on the that they help her side of the her side of the fight. So I think I think right, right, I right. think that do I think that um I think that recontextualizing it so so you have so you have people who were who were def who were defectors instead of instead of en instead of engineers would certainly work. 
Um, yeah, I can because it just it, may, it, it the way that it is now it kind of makes you just question like how the characters are processing the information. And it makes it, it, it kind of brings the believability of the characters into question because it, they're not asking questions that you would ask. Yeah. But when but framed in this way of like, oh, these are defectors, rather than like, well, what are a couple of engineers doing over here? Mm -hmm. um, but defectors makes more sense. Yeah. And of course, of course. Of course, of course, even defectors can have plenty of secrets, so you can still have the whole thing of threat of threatening to kill them if to pre to prevent secrets from getting out. Yes. Um, and of course, after after that, a lot a lot of the stuff that have to, that mm -hmm. happens afterwards, you don't you don't have to change all that much. Um, because it is it is still doing the the war between two nations um setup. Um, what, which eventually, eventually that leads to the, eventually that would lead to the confrontation that's seen where, um, it se it seems like both nations are about to throw down and then the, then the Vendini show up again. Although in the, in, I say, I'd say in this case, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an instance of. Them, of them showing up for the th for the third time, this would be the second time that they show up. Because I think with that, you can you can have it you can have it still be a sh a shock when they when they show up instead of a oh not these guys again, because there's been enough distance where you think that you've es that you've escaped them. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to bore the audience with repetitious actions like that. And you you want to keep things more suspenseful, and because at at the t three times is um is too much in that case. The fir in the first instance you can have you can you have the instance of the of them sh of them showing up unprov of them showing up unprovoked on essentially a essentially a vacation planet, and. Uh, and not, and now it's now it's an inst now you're just adding more to the mystery by the question of okay so, okay so they weren't there to they weren't there to fuck up Hydra Four so why are they here why are they here on Elcor yeah um and it all and given given the fact that fate himself is their quarry um them showing up only twice instead of three times helps not give that away as easily. Um, and it's, it's still I, I I agree. Yeah, and it's it, it keeps it like you say it keeps the mystery and and also the suspense because we we're not really sure what they're after. But the way structuring it like this kind of keeps that vague, mm -hmm. and that's what you want because I, what is a story but like a series of questions that is then but if you already figure out the answer before it answers its own question then what's the point mm -hmm. and especially since all all that's known about the vendini up until that point is that they um, that they're a very advanced race whose technology perplexes even the best engineers and they and they're not and they don't like they don't they're not exactly sociable people um and I would I would still have the cutscene where where he ends up using the power of destruction for the first time to re to wreck their ship. Because one that was a very good, I and one that's a very good escalation, and two, it hel it helps th it helps throw a monkey wrench into the mystery because, okay okay you okay you've got you've you've got a you've got a race that. For, that for, that has now that has now gone all the way to this planet, and you've got fate who, at first se at first seemed to be nothing special, but now that's not the case. One uh, thing that I would say is kind of a consistent issue with a lot of JRPGs is kind of the question of like, well, why these people? Why are these the individuals that are saving the world? And that's 
I, I, to Star Ocean's credit, that is something that is solved by giving Fate this um, this uh, this kind this kind of insane otherworldly ability that's beyond even his own comprehension. Mm-hmm. And when and of course, uh, of course, then then you can ha- then you can have. Um, then you can then you can have the pro- the proper escalation and bring the s- and bring the space part um back back into it. Um, mm-hmm. I w- and of course of course um after after that is after that is when the executioners start sh- start um showing up and and cleaning house. Um, and I. As tempting as it would be to ha- to ha- to use this as a moment to do to do the ch- to do the chase where you're trying to stay one step ahead of executioners, um, there's no way you could have pulled that with the technology at the time. Not w- not without abstracting a lot. So I'd st- I'd still c- and and that kind that kind of macro play just doesn't just doesn't fit. Um, this this particular storytelling motif, for all intents and purposes, this is still um, Fate's story. I mean, we say that, but Fate doesn't have much of a character, and it's kind of hard, to, kind of hard to have a story without a character that has much of a personality. Um, I can certain I can certainly get that, but it, it this we are. Um, we are, we are, even, even though, even though I'm pretty sure a lot of developers won't admit it, um, a lot of, a lot of protagonists in console RPGs are still operating on the, um, on the, on the Dragon Quest, um, formula. Yeah. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, they, I, I agree. That, that is kind of a consistent trend where the, the main characters are, Made to be intentionally sort of bland, as a way for um, the player to self-insert. Yeah, I bl- um, it's an it's and um, I don't consider this an east. I don't consider this an east-west thing because, well, a lot of CRPGs are even more are even more blatant about about it being a um about it being a blank slate for you to inhabit, but. That mm-hmm. same blank slateness is is just as applicable for Gordon Freeman or Master Chief. In, in or, a way, if you want to think about it, certain uh, in in Final Fantasy VII, Cloud Cloud's character is in a way a commentary on that sort of writing because Cloud based his personality on Zack. Mm-hmm. So I kind of looking back on it, I feel like that was the developers. Or at least the writers uh, saying something about the the fact that there are so many JRPG char- uh, main protagonists that are written to be in this sort of nebulous of uh, ha- not having a, a real personality. Mm-hmm. Man, FF Seven is so fucking good. <laughs> of course, what a clever uh, game! I w- um, there is there can be just as much of an argument about. About Cloud having disassociative identity disorder, but that's a story for another day. I can agree with that, but I I'd, I'd still say that uh, that lines up with it. Uh, with it, even if that were the case, I would still argue that that was part of the uh, messaging with his character. Yeah, and with I'd say, and because of that, I'd I'd say I'd say that um. The main other thing that wouldn't that wouldn't have to be changed too much is the is the whole th- the whole thing with the moon base and the revelation of the time gate. And and the, and thus the revelation that um se- that venturing into into sim symbolot symbol <laughs> Jeez, how am I gonna say this? Symbology based genetics. I'll put it that way because. Calling it symbi- calling it symbological, just does not roll off off the tongue properly. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, now, um, I would also suggest, um, because 
at, at this point, I don't think we can really. Uh, there's no way we can erase the twist, right? We're, like, there's we're get, you, yeah, we're get, we're getting to that, um, right? Um, but I just want to say, like, I would I would say throughout the story to have because I f- granted it's been a while since I played through the game. Mm-hmm. However, based on my memory of it, uh, there was no real build up towards the twist. It just um. So I feel like there should have been some, at least some inclinations implanted into the story that, so by the time the the twist happens, it's still a shock, but you could look back and go, well, at least, you know, certain things that didn't make sense before now do make sense. Like maybe, um, maybe there could be like a glitch or something. And some, you know, something that just like doesn't make any sense within the real world. It's like, well, why, why is this like this? This doesn't make any sense. Or um, just certain things that uh, you know could only really be explained by well, because it's all a simulation. You know, like just give us some breadcrumbs along the way so that by the time we find where the the loaf of bread is it's like oh okay Mm -hmm. now when it comes to the when it comes when so because of that would you would you have it that there are certain things on planet that don't seem to don't seem to feel right um i would but I would, I would, I think it would also be important um, for the characters to mention um, things that happened in the past because I, I don't think it would make sense for it to be isolated on this planet specifically. I think if the characters are saying something like, "Oh, you know, I remember seeing something weird like that when I was growing up," like, uh, like you know, one one day the sky um, had like a a rectangle in it that was missing and it was black and didn't make it it was so weird it made no sense i thought it was some uh, a weirdly shaped ship or something but it was just this you know just anecdotes from the characters kind of like talking about how all of them have seen and experienced these oddities in within the world to add to the believability of the twist and then the player can see for themselves while they're on the planet that oh okay yeah there's some there's strange occurrences. Yeah. Now, when it comes now, eh, when it comes to when it comes obviously there's the whole th- obviously the the revelation of the t- of the time gate and the and thus um the revelation of an- of another pl- of another um plane of existence, um. And the and the use of symbology to do so, and thus the um the three, the um power setups to to create the to essentially go into that universe, um that being dis- that being destruction, alter alteration, um and connections. I'm sorry, I meant three, not four. What was, what the hell am I thinking? Oh yeah, oh yeah, there was a fourth. Ah, uh, hang on, let me make sure I get this right. Destruction, alteration, and con- and connection. Um, and I'd I'd say I'd say that eh, that um that es- establishing that and I'm debating I'm debating about whether whether or not th- whether or not those powers should be should be reflected in new abilities that they get. I mean, yeah, fate had the had the celestial abilities, but um, the wind up on them was ridiculous in order to even do it. But I'd say, but I'd, I would say that I would say, I would say that um, once we, once we go, once we go out, once we go out of three D space and into four D space, um, this is where, this is where we have to acknowledge that twist. Yeah, and this is go, this is going to be. This is going to be tricky. 
Um, I'd I'd say I'd say one of the first one of the first things that can be done to address this is not make it a um a a MMO. I real I realize that the that the whole idea of of um of MMO like MMO like um stories or or that or what um was be, was being referred to in in certain circles as lit RPGs was st was starting to make headway around this time. That is true. However, um it does it um trying to do that would un would undermine the events not only go not only undermine the events in this in the story up until this up until that point but also undermine the events of any stories before and after right exactly that's it's, what makes the twist so bad it's that it it uh invalidates the entire series and there's the thing is when it when it comes to doing a good twist there's a lot of ways to do it, but the key thing is, everything leading up to that point should make sense, and you were just see, you were just seeing, you weren't you weren't seeing the full picture, or you it was right in front of you. You just you just were not you just were not seeing it at the right angle. Um, and we and that's what that's why I think establishing those glitches would be would be an important part, but in. I would I would actually say instead of instead of instead of going with this idea that that it's all that is all a game given given the fact that only that in 4D space only people of high standing are allowed to have jobs apparently which um is a, is definitely a very Roddenberry thing to do but Roddenberry wasn't exactly the best writer I'd say I'd say that in, I'd say that instead, as cliche as it is, I'm I'm of I'm of the opinion that um, that the that the eternal sphere should should be one should be one giant research project. That works for me. I mean, just making it an MMO just adds so 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 many uh, just. It, it's so many problems like like okay like just the simple fact that playing through the game why is it that we had we never encountered any players like i don't know if it, i think it would have been kind of obvious if you're playing if you know you're going through the story and one person from the mmo is is on the planet and they're fucking around, you know, shitting it up and doing whatever. It's like it would be very obvious, and it's like that doesn't happen. It is. It, it has been theorized by some fans that Welch is a 4D being. Okay. Given 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 that she keeps showing up in every single game. I don't like this theory. <laughs> like I, like I said, like I said, it's um, like I said, it's 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 uh, like I said, it's certain it's certainly a theory. But I um, I I honest I honestly treat it the same the same way I treat say say um um Sid in the Final Fantasy series. Where you do, where yeah. you just yeah 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 you just, me too. Al you just always have somebody named Sid, or like in From Software games, there's always someone named Patches. Well, and also in From Software games, you always have a Moonlight Blade that is the that is one of the strongest weapons you can get. That's true. That's and, true. And in some and in some cases, like say like say um Otogi or Ninja Blade. Yes, I still have Ninja Blade. It is the strongest weapon you can get, and you got to do a lot of work to get it. They should re-release Otogi. Ot if if they do if if they do, I think Otogi I think Otogi one and two should get should get a re-release. Um. Sim simply. 
I mean, we we managed to get a re-release on the most on the most bizarre entry in From Software's library in the form of Metal Wolf Chaos. Why so much noise about Metal Wolf? <laughs> Which um spot which spawned its own RPG adaptation called Full Metal President. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> and the the whole well, the original title was even better. Take back of freedom. That's a oh, that's good. <laughs> like if you're gonna if you're gonna be stupid, don't half ass it is is the lesson. But getting back getting back on track, um if you're get, if you're going to do this whole the, the world is an MMO, would it kill you to give us would you kill you to give us a console command gimmick? Oh, that would have been cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like at the at the very least if you're going to if you're going to do it have it um have it have it connect to gameplay in some in some way. Even if the console command isn't isn't actual console commands, you're just going back and and doing and doing cheats to teleport or or mess or mess with equipment or something, you know the kind of cheats that you'd find in a roguelike. Yeah, that would have been fun, but that's why it wasn't in there. Uh, <laughs> but I now the the other th that whole that whole thing of only people in high standing are are allowed to work. Um, I'm. That I'm per, I'm perfectly fine with blowing that up and t and removing it, simply simply because of the fact that it ends up creates more, ends up creating more problems than it solves. Yeah, um, I think we I think we also have to just address the weirdness of the fact that you know because the characters are technically NPCs in this MMO, and yet they somehow found out some way to exist in the 4D dimension, which is, quote-unquote, the real world. But, like, what are they exactly? Are they binary code given flesh? Like, what, what the fuck are they? This is, this, is definitely, this is definitely one of those things. This is, the pro this is the problem whenever you try and introduce high concepts in, into science fiction and why... More often than not, it's better to go the pulp route when you're trying to do science fiction, and unless unless you have an absolute clear idea of what you're doing and you stick to it, because you end up with these kind of situations where you where you ha where you have to where you ha where you have to um where you have to answer questions you're not prepared to. The anal the analogy that I, that I would pr that I would probably use it has it as a bit of a callback is. Um, we know that, we know that one, one of the powers is connection, the idea of connecting with, um, 4D space. The second power is alteration, and I'd go with the idea that all, since they never explain it, that alteration allow, allows 3D beings to, ex to exist in 4D space. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, especially since it's imp it's implied that the creation of these three powers is is messing around with genetics. So it would be perfect. I'd say it's definitely a stretch, but I think there's a better chain of logic with that. That um, in doing so, they're able to tr they're able to become the equi the equivalent of a 4D being and ex and exist in that kind of space instead of just being a collection of data. Um. Yeah, yeah, uh, but what what would you say about this oddity? Would you would you would you try to frame this differently, or would you just kind of let it slide and just be like, uh, let's and, and not touch it? I would, I would, I would only slightly touch it in the way that I mentioned with alt with alteration, but and and by that i mean, and by that i mean put and by that i mean put in a throwaway line and maybe a bit more detail in the in the equivalent of a codex but i but i wouldn't spend too much attention on it since for since some um, that since that's not the that's not the bigger um detail yeah n not only that but i feel that the more attention you draw to it the the more obvious how 
glaringly flawed it is and doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Whereas if whereas if I if I if I only slightly address it and then fo and then focus on more important things, there will still be there will still be those who who tilt their head at it, but I think I think more people will just be willing to will just be willing to go with it. Um, sure. The, I've it, I've o I've always been of the opinion that um, your world doesn't need to make a hundred percent sense because I don't think that's possible. But I I think enough work needs to put on, into it so that it makes enough sense for me to go okay that's fine and move on mm -hmm. now when it now when it comes to now um obviously this leads into the re the revelation of the of the sphere company and and the like um i would i would actually i was far now i mentioned that the eternal sphere is a is meant is in this case a a glorified science experiment. I I would actually go with the idea that these that um this that this particular this particular experiment is 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 all of, is all about um all about tr all about trying trying to trying to pr trying to predict um what may, what may or may not happen based on, based on this based on data that has that has similar events um. If you're familiar with can, can I just say that the eternal sphere that sounds like what they would have called the skill tree system. <laughs> yeah. I can I can well well there was already a spin-off called Blue Sphere, so you're not far uh, off on that front. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know, the name of it just makes me sound like you know, like the sphere grid. Or the Crystarium, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, continue. But now I, I will now I will ad, I will admit that th that this whole massive simulation to try to try and to try and predict the future has has been dipped into with the story that they added later on in No Man's Sky. Um. But as for, but um they added that after the fact, so I'm not so we can't really count that either. Um, I'd s the analog that I'm using for this isn't No Man's Sky, but rather, um, Foundation, the the Isaac Asimov series of books that got him a Hugo Award. In, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. how, are you familiar at all with um, Foundation? Uh, no, I have not read it. Um, in the Foundation. I'll I'll go in, I'll go into the skinny version of it. Foundation is equ is equal parts political thriller and space opera, and with a lot a mo more of an emphasis on on solving larger issues than just action. Um, and was one, was meant to be one of the crucial parts of hi of Asimov's history of the future, that he that he had been built that he had been tooling around with with things like robots and empire. Um. Now, one of the key one of the key conceits within it is a concept known as psychohistory, which is all about trying to predict the future using psychology and statistical analysis. Um, it's it is, but it is but it's not but not with any sort of exactitude. Um, for instance, to you to use a to use a historical example of this kind of thing. Psychohistory would not pr would not predict that Fr that um Franz Ferdinand's assassination would happen and that would kick off World War One. It would, however, predict that some that an event would ha that an event would happen that would kick off that would kick off the war, simply because of the fact that Europe was such a powder keg at that time. That's kind of the that's that's the approach that it's in, that's intended with psychohistory. Um, okay. In the same vein, the eternal sphere is is looking at is looking at events on a on a literal galactic scale to to try to try and figure out to, with it, that is a collection of of um, causes and effects to try and to try and to try and predict um, to try and predict events in the in 4D space. You're just while also doubling as an MMO for some reason. We're, I'm killing off the MMO part. Um, oh, oh, right, right, right. Okay. 
you're you're still you're you, you we can still have pe we can still have people come in as observers and you can st and you can still you can still um ha and you can still so uh, who are t or taking or taking notes or or um keep or keeping an eye on things but not but not it not um directly engaging with the experiment right yeah that makes sense and and you can and you can still ha you can still have it work um but th but that bring that brings us to to the f to the final encounter with Luther himself um and when it com when it comes to everything up until that point i can we i don't think we'd have to change his per his particular attitude of being pi being pissy that being pissy that his that his experiment is starting to gain scent is gaining well actually actually that does raise a problem because his whole thing is is that um me, is that sim, is that symbol is that mixing symbology and and biological life is what is what pissed him is what pissed him off and the whole and the whole awareness of the t of the time gate and and thus if, and with that whole thing of data should remain data um the pro the problem the problem is if all if all that it took was the discovery of a time gate for people for people to for him for him to decide to go exterminatus on the project why did it take him this long to do it also can he just i don't know pull the plug yeah and beca because because of that there's a f there's a few things that I there's a few minor changes that I'm thinking of going with. One is the is the fact that while he well that his his job was the maintenance uh the the maintenance and the consistency of of the Eternal Sphere project. But in ter but in terms of in terms of actually shutting the thing down, that is over his authority. Mm, okay. Oh, i.e., i.e., he is he is a he is a high-ranking employee of the sphere of the sphere corporation, but he's not the, he's not the CEO. Right. That would make better sense. In the in the same vein, I would I would also I would also have it that uh, because of the fact that this is an experiment a a scientific exper a scientific experiment on the highest of steroids. He's st he'd still have to present his fi he'd still have to present his findings to his colleagues. And you'd think the fact that they created uh like that like you you would think the fact that the main characters were able to enter into the fourth dimension like that would be they would be over the fucking moon. They'd be like holy shit. What we created has advanced so far that not no, not only are they sentient they are they are self conscious but they 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 got to the point where they were able to create their own technology that allowed them to uh come over t into our world like that's insane and yet like luther is just being fucking grumpy about it instead and because because of the, because of that i'd say i'd say that one, once I want you to picture this after 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 you after the party ends up going into 4D space um and af and af and after meeting some of the 4D beings and getting the gist you cut over to essentially a essentially a council or debate or debating room scene where you where you see Luther present presenting his issue um to to the to the other um to the other researchers and other administrators of the project and you and you have t you have two sides in the debate. You have you have one you have one side that's one side that has the attitude of this is, of this has gone too f this has gone too far. We need to, we need to reset the program. And you have the people who are thinking this is this is an um, this is an amazing discovery. We need to keep, we need to we need to take notes on this and keep going. That would have been much more interesting because and now. Because that's I think that's a problem with the game's story in that it's 
a lot of it is just solely focused on the perspective of the main party that we don't really get to see the perspective of uh, the, the people from the fourth dimension. And I think framing it like this, where it, it becomes this ideological conflict between them, where they're like, well, wait a minute, no, this is going too far. We need to stop this to know this is an incredible discovery. We need to keep observing this and we need to see, see where it goes. Um, that could have been more of a driving force and more uh, central to the conflict. And it would have made for a much more interesting story. Now, I, w I want to make clear in, in that particular hypothetical scene that I'm going with, when it comes to the question of... of, re of of re of resetting the system, or at the or at the very least, just getting just getting rid of humanity in this regard. Luther gets outvoted. Yeah, it's of course, put, it's put to it's put to a vote, and he and his side is is ma is mass is out is outvoted three to one. Um, and it could it could be any other number, but the but the point is, a vast majority does not does not um share his perspective. Since we, since the only, the only, the only people who, who, the only person who seems to be on the mindset of, of, Lu, of Luther's got Luther's got a few screws loose, is his sister, and I think, and while that's nice, while that's nice and all to have that connection with the party, I think we need, I think we need to show more than that, which is why I'm going with this whole outvoting thing, and afterwards he sends in the ex, the executioners, um, to sim, to sim, as a a bit as a bit of a fuck you. I think um, I think they would also, you know, it's, it's since we're reframing things like this, I think it would also do the story a lot of good to really focus on why Luther feels the way he does, because his perspective seems to be they're just data, and that's all there is to it. Even though that's clearly not the case, right? Like. It's obvious that the uh, that humanity has uh, become conscious. They're self-aware, um, and they they've gained sentience. But Luther still seems to be under this, for whatever reason, he seems to be under this notion that, like, that you know that that it doesn't matter. So, I think more time needs to be spent diving into that and going like, well, why why is exactly that Luther feels this way? And um, I think one way to frame it would would simply be that, like, he has it could be that he has a very um, literal mind. And it's implied he, that it's implied that he created the program, isn't it? Uh, I believe so. In that case, he probably has a programmer's mindset. Um, mm. A lot of. I'm not saying all programmers are like this, but a lot of programmers have a have a disposition towards being a bit of a control freak, wanting to make sure every little thing works exactly as it's intended with no deviations. Because there, there's a reason why the programmer's drinking song goes as follows. <clears throat> 99 little bugs in the code, 99 bugs in the code, you take one down, you patch it around, 108 little bugs in the code. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, and that is probably true, mm -hmm. but I don't think, and again, it has been a while since I played the game in, in its defense, mm -hmm. but at least based on my recollection, I, I don't really think that was something that was touched upon adequately, and I think in this reframing of the story, if more time was spent on Luther as a character and get, getting more of his perspective... Uh, even if it's simply just to like very firmly establish that he is, he is unconvinced of the sentience because these characters are made up of code and data and, and the are binary, therefore it's impossible for them to be a uh, sentient in his perspective. You know that could that could go a long way in making. Because otherwise, he just comes across as, like, he's just dumb. Like, because it's it, you just look at the characters, you see them acting like human beings. 
you know, it's it's obvious that of of, of course they're sentient, mm -hmm. but like if if the if the if Luther if they went to more lengths to kind of present Luther as like no, he actually has some mental faculties that are not working properly. That kind of makes it so that he he is incapable of accepting this for you know whatever reason. It would make his character more believable. Yeah, and that's that's the reason why I brought up that whole pro that whole programmer's mindset because yes. since he since he created the whole thing, um, he's he's seen it from he's seen it from the perspective that he's they saw it went during it during its initial phases and that and all that changed was is just a more complex version of that initial state. Yes, um, but uh, it, it it feels to me at least that like. Maybe the writer understood that intuitively, but forgot to uh, convey it properly within the story. Or, or they just didn't, or they just didn't have enough time. Um, that, that that is true. You know, uh, I'll give you that. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Star Ocean Three is the way it is, not because of it being in the the intended final product but just because they had bigger plans and it didn't work out you know that there, that happens there, a lot um there's also there's also the fact that that um i be, i believe if i'm if i'm not mistaken till the end of time was triace's first foray into using the ps3's tech not ps3 ps2's tech yeah i was gonna say ps2 yeah. um i will check on that like, so I don't, I don't. yes yes it is uh, till the end of time is their first ps2 game um is yes right um i think i think this was at least a year before radiator radiation stories and valkyrie profile 2 so uh right yeah star ocean in japan came out in 2003 radio stories came out in 2005 and um and Valkyrie Profile Two, I think I I want to say that was two thousand four, but don't quote me on that. Uh, no, Valkyrie Profile Two was two thousand six. Yeah, the point the point is that st that that um this is their first entry, and whenever you're whenever you're jumping between 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 um that between generations of tech, there's always some gr there's always some growing pains, because not only that yeah. um I think this was their first foray into doing anything three D. Period, or at least, or at least this sort of full poly 3D. They had, they had up until that point only done 2.5 D in the PS1 era at best. Yes, that is true. Um, and I think, I think it's very telling when you consider that they released a director's cut version, and even that version had glitches. Mm -hmm. I think it does speak to the unfinished nature of the game. Yeah. And. I could I could I could joke that it I could joke that it was that it was that it was Grace's F before Grace's F but um Grace's F does not deserve that. No. I was going to say great cuz Grace's F is is a fantastic game mm -hmm. and director's cut is still kind of a mess. Yeah. But the this but when it comes to the ending after after Luther is beaten this is where one of my more drastic changes would have to be done because, at the end of it, he just he decides he decides to he decides to do to pull a to pull the villainous middle finger and uh, and and delete the eternal sphere anyways, and yet and yet somehow it's implied that it's either a backup or an alteration or alteration allowed allowed the allowed the um allowed everyone to not be deleted. Um, the the approach the approach that I'm the approach that I'd want to go I'd want to go with instead is and this this may be this may be a bit of this may be a bit of a pull but I'm thinking of I'm thinking of going with the idea that um that the that the alter that alteration was a, was applied to Luther in reverse. Mm, what do you mean? Mate, it's um he he ends um after he's after he's beaten he's ma um he's made into a into a three D being. 
Uh -huh. Okay. That, I thought that's what you meant, but I wanted you to clarify. Yeah. Um, see, what what I was going for in in my mind was that after being beaten, that's what Luther needed psychologically for him to realize that the 3D beings are sentient creatures whose uh, sanctity of life should be respected. I want. I wanted to. I that that is that is some that is certainly one aspect, one way to go, one way to go about it. Um, I ended up going with the with with the approach that I wanted to that I went with simply because of the of a sense of irony. Mm -hmm. he, I I can see that his insistence that data should remain data, and now he's exact, and now he's been reduced to to the exact form. That he that he w that he looked down on all that time. I do appreciate the irony angle, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I I I guess it's just the uh, the psychologist in me. But I I also like the idea that like it took him. Um, it took him getting beaten by the party for him to finally realize like, oh, like both in a kind of like a literal and, uh, you know, th thematic way, it, he got his senses beaten into him, you know? And, and that's when he realized, oh, well, shit. I mean, they, I guess they are sentient creatures and I should, you know, I should respect that. Regardless, I do think I do think another cutscene that um, that displays um, Fate's destruction ability should take place here, since the the purpose of the thing was was so was so that the trio could defend could defend themselves in 4D space. Yeah, his ability doesn't really mm, seem to make any real impact on the narrative. It just seems to just be there. And it's an ability that you can use in battle, but I think you have to be like a really high level before you can even unlock it, if I'm not mistaken. There's that, and there's the fact that um, the wind up on the wind up on it is ridiculously long. So, so yeah. So even even using it is a, even using it is a bit of an ask. Right. Um. Well, at least when it came to Celestial Blast. When it comes to Celestial Blade, that's it's not as it's not as much of a wind up, but all that is is ju is just a bu is just a buff. Um, I think you mean Dimension Blade. Yeah, dim Dimension Blade. Yeah, that that one was actually a pretty useful ability because it was because the wind up created like a damage field around Fate, and then he would teleport and then slash. Um. But, but regard regardless, um, I think I th I think a I think after that you can ha you it would be the um likely mo the likely move to to be made would be would be um would would be to would be to have Luther disciplined by his peers. Since you and you can probably go with the whole thing of. Him, him activating the destroyers without authorization. Since, e <laughs> since, e since even, so even something like that, you'd pro you'd probably need to have the explicit permission to use. You couldn't just use it willy nilly. Other, and I, th I feel like that allows us to, to sidestep the issue of why did it take so long for him to use it? Right, right. Um. And. Because, and because of, because of that, you you technically ha even if you have him live at the end of it, he's tech he's still punished because he's hell. You could you could even have it that um that she, that um him being him being converted into a three into a three D being is part of that punishment. He's for all intent since the whole the whole reason I went with that whole three D being thing is for all intents and purposes after that he's stuck in the sphere. Right. Because now he's a 3D being. Mm -hmm. 
and because because of because of that you after that you can you can still have i'd say the the endings that end up happening afterwards based on affection level you can still have those without change but yeah just but just these few little changes would al would allow would allow for a would allow for a setup where you ha you can still have that major twist but it's it but it's being done in a way that it that um doesn't un that doesn't undermine the story um supposedly the st supposedly the theme that the story was in was intended to have was trust but okay but once ag once again it does. It doesn't come. Ac it doesn't come across that way. Like, no, I, I that I, I don't know what I would say the theme was, but trust was not something that came through for me. And I'm I'm not. I don't. Ex there's not exactly a one word theme that that can go with for for this. Um, aside 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 from aside from possibly future. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that could work. It's a, it's a, it's a stretch, but it, but I've never, I've never been, I've never been a big fan of of building a story around around a around a one word theme in that in that regard. No, yeah, me neither. So, um, simply because no, you're you're um you're putting a low ceiling on what you can do, at at best, and at worst, you're bottle you're bottlenecking yourself. There's also the there's also the fact that. A pet peeve of mine I've I've had when it comes to when it comes to storytelling, and is um is cert is certain people's over reliance on theme over narrative. Oh, uh, because the, 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 the thing is, and I think this is a mistake a lot of writers make is they try to craft the narrative around the theme, where in most. I, I think the best stories is where the theme empowers the narrative. Yes, that that is that is something I'm, that is something I'm more I'm more willing to go with. Um, because the because th when you th when you when I think when I think about when I think about story the thing with the thing with theme is if it's done proper is you c is that you can still you is that. If you excise the "quote unquote" theme, the story does not change. You can still have the same story that you ha that you had before beforehand. The theme is just um, as over as overused as, as overused as this idiom is icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, I mean, I I would say though that. Um... If you look at something like Berserk, mm -hmm. um, that has a lot of themes. But I, I think one in particular that stands out to me is uh, free will versus determinism. And I don't think, like, I think Berserk is still a great story, even if you were to remove its theme. But I wouldn't go. I wouldn't say that it's icing on the cake. I'd say it's pretty important and integral to the story. But at the same time, I do get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, Berserk, I'd say, is like if if you're a young writer, do not strive to be Berserk because that's way that's uh, unless you are extremely confident in your skills, um, that's 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 going to be a bit above you. So maybe not. Maybe Berserk is not a totally a fair comparison. <laughs> um, maybe certain maybe certain parts of Berserk, like say the like say just the Golden Age, but. Or 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 maybe a few maybe a few things maybe if it's something, um, the the line that the line that comes to mind is young man young man your arms too short to box with God. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yes, I am fully aware of the irony given given cer given certain aspects in Berserk. But, yes. Um, <laughs> truth truth be told, if if someone was if someone was um planning on planning on writing a dark fantasy story. I tell I tell them to study the classics, you know, stud, study Howard, study Le, study Lieber, study um, Burroughs. <clears throat> um, if you want, if you if you want to go for some, if you want to go for the more heroic stuff, um, yes, you can. Yes, you can study Tolkien, but that's a rap. But beware, but beware of going down a rabbit hole. Um, but ju 
but just st but just um study a lot study a lot of authors and see what and see what they did and then contrast that with what you want to do and yeah but m mainly the point i always try to make though is um as particularly if you are a young writer and you're you're starting out um is to allow the themes to kind of come about naturally in the writing rather than um, consciously trying to force it in. Because uh, psychologically speaking, we're, we're going to be putting things in our stories that we don't consciously intend just by the nature of how our brains work. So just allow the story to just come through rather than this story is about truth or what, what, what was it? Trust, Trust. or star, star ocean. You know, don't, don't try to force it in your, your story is going to say something, even if you're not intentionally trying to do it. So just let it come about, tell the story that naturally comes out. And I and I'd al I'd also say that the sto the um the sto the story that you t the story that you tell um other pe other people will will inter will interpret it as as they see fit but as long but instead in but let them in let them come up with their interpretations don't don't tell them that's I rem I remember I remember when um. I remember when the when when um the which when the Wachowskis um did did that whole thing did that whole thing where they claimed that the uh, where they claimed that the Matrix is an al is an allegory for being trans um and I and I did and I didn't buy it for a couple of reasons one um that's not how allegories work and t and two you don't t you don't tell pe you don't try and pull that kind of word of God shit you're ki you're killing the you're killing the mist. You're killing the mystery, and you're killing the fun for people. Um, I I agree. I mean, whether Matrix is a trans allegory or not, I mean, I found the argument. You know, whatever. I'm not. I don't have an opinion on that. But I do agree that they should keep their fucking mouth shut and let people read into it how they want. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what they intended. You know, the work speaks for itself, and they should allow it to speak for itself. You know, your your intentions don't matter as much as you think they do. And again, just because of our, how our brains work, sometimes our work says things that we don't even realize ourselves. Yes. But but um, I think but I think I think that more or le more or less co more or less covers this particular. Recon reconstruction there's not there's not a whole lot of of other parts i can i can think of aside from aside from me aside from maybe one maybe when you unlock multiplayer allow allow you to do allow you to allow me, so that i don't have to have a specific save just when i want to curb stomp my my friend sure yeah <laughs> um like it's cute um, that they, it's cute that they added multiplayer but um at least put at least put it in there at least put it in there in a kind of out of the box way yeah, agreed. But I mean, I I would also change the controls because that I I play I tried playing it recently and woof it the, the controls have not aged well at all. It, that game is clunk. It's some some jank. Is it? But, yeah. On a scale on a scale from one, there de there definitely is, and like like I like I said, I think I think we can chalk that up to them not having an idea of what they were doing with um with full three D space. Yeah, yeah. In fairness, true. Um, but I think they should have realized their limitations. That's what if you look at Tales of Symphonia, mm -hmm. you move left and right. They they knew their limitations and they they understood what they were good at and what they weren't good at. Yeah. And uh Tales of Symphonia as a a byproduct far easier to go back to and enjoy. Grant granted Star Ocean up until 
even up until that point was wasn't do, wasn't doing wasn't doing the one plane um setup. It wasn't. That's true. Um, but I'm just using Symphony as an example of the developers um, having a good idea of where their strengths and weaknesses lied, and um, they made a game that still holds up. Yeah. While Star Ocean is, you know, even even ignoring the problems with the story, Star Ocean just as a game uh, is harder to re to uh, go back to by comparison. But with the, with that said, I think I think that I think that'll do it for this for this particular reconstruction, um, and we'll, and we'll be and the Geek Watch will of course be back here tomorrow with a little with something a little bit more crunchy, invol involving a friend's project. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.